Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. A major ruling from Judge Netburn coming down today. This is one of two rulings that we were waiting on. Uh, this one having to do with deliberative process privilege. There are all sorts of documents that the SEC holds having to do with Bitcoin and Ether and XRP. And uh, the SEC is claiming that pretty much 100% of them are super duper top secret. And uh, it's privileged information. And as a result, it should, none of it should have anything to do with this court case. And so that, that's, that's a big ruling that came down today. Um, it's partially a win for Ripple, but arguably it's a slightly bigger win for the SEC, unfortunately. So there are some things in here. It's, I, I'm just, I personally am disappointed, but it is what it is. Uh, the other big ruling we're still waiting on, I believe it's Judge Torres that will rule on this one, the, the next one is the um, is uh, Ripple's defense, the fair notice defense. And we don't know when that's going to be ruled on. Uh, maybe it'll be in the coming weeks, perhaps. Don't know for sure. Uh, that one's absolutely massive. It's, it's whether or not uh, Ripple will even be able to use that legal defense. Uh, it seems crystal clear to pretty much anybody listening to this that Ripple did not have sufficient notice that what they were doing was illegal for a ton of reasons that I've been highlighting on this channel for over a year at this point. Uh, but we don't even know for sure if they're going to be able to make that legal argument. So we're waiting here on that. So um, I'm going give to give you uh, all the details. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear, I am not, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I'm not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. And so uh, props to XRP community member and attorney James K. Filan, who shared uh, this morning, th this, uh, this uh, or I guess it was this afternoon, this this legal filing he's always on top of the stuff as soon as this stuff gets out he's sharing it on social media so i always want to give credit where it's due that's where i first came across this and also john deaton's crypto law reported it as well so credit there and uh, attorney jeremy hogan shared this information as well and he said the following clearly uh his his, his impression is that this is better for the sec than than ripple so yeah ripple got a win but only sort of because the, the, the SEC got even more out of this. But here's what attorney Jeremy Hogan wrote. Ripple did not do as well as I thought they would. The judge seems to need a very little to tie a document to a deliberation and has concluded that Hinman's speech was just his opinion. But Ripple does get the emails discussing Hinman's speech. So that last part's good. Uh, Hinman's speech there. And so he wrote score SEC 2 Ripple 1. And indeed, it is the case that regarding this super duper top secret information, the judge didn't seem to have trouble finding that in most cases, uh, the, the SEC uh, was correct in asserting that uh, the, these are privileged documents. And so there were, um, in, in this document here, this is Appendix A that was submitted along with, uh, along with the, tw I think it was 23 page uh, um, legal filing uh, from the judge today. And there are 20, if I counted correctly, I counted quickly before recording this video, there are 29 documents uh, that, that Ripple wanted access to specifically here. And uh, and so uh, Attorney Filan, he highlighted in green all of the ones that, uh, that Ripple's going to get. And it was only 12 out of 29. You can see as I'm scrolling through the ones... Uh, in green that that's what they're going to be getting so they're getting something but most of this stuff honestly uh, it's going to remain secret forever unfortunately here um, so there's this headline from finance feeds a uh, breaking ripple scores mixed result against the sec over privilege in xrp lawsuit judge sarah netburn has granted in part and denied in part ripple's and individual defendants motion to compel the SEC to produce certain documents that the SEC has asserted are protected by the deliberative process privilege or DPP for short. The ruling comes after a frustrating back and forth for nearly a year since the SEC repeatedly refused to deliver said documents despite the judge's orders. After a motion to compel, both parties got together in a telephone conference in which the judge decided to proceed with an in-camera review before making a deliberation. The deliberation arrived today. And so uh, in-camera review, for those of you not in the know, or perhaps you've forgotten at this point and could use a little refresher, uh, in-camera review just means in-person review. And so 
the um, the SEC, all of the asshats at the SEC, insisting that all of these documents are super duper top secret. Uh, the, the judge wasn't just taking their word for it that that that, that was the case, and so she she demanded to do an in-camera review, which just means in-person review, meaning that she got access to all of these documents, personally reviewed them herself, and and then after that, that's how she came to the conclusions that she came to. Anyway, uh, peace continues. The court order includes the discussion over the applicable law for the deliberative process privilege, the context, and analogous situations. As to the application of the privilege to the document submitted for the in-camera review, the judge found that the SEC failed to establish that several sets of notes were protected. And here's a quote. The deliberative process privilege is qualified, and it must yield higher interests where appropriate. To determine whether disclosure is appropriate, notwithstanding the applicability of the privilege, courts consider, one, uh, the relevance of the evidence sought to be protected, two, the availability of other evidence, three, the seriousness of the litigation and the issues involved, four, the role of the government in the litigation, and five, the possibility of future timidity by government employees who will be forced to recognize that their secrets are violable, um, under this analysis, the privileged documents need not be produced. I just, you guys, before I proceed, I'm kind of curious. What were your expectations, everybody listening? Like, I, What I was hoping for, at a minimum hoping for, was that the vast majority, if not all of these documents, um, would have ultimately been shared with Ripple. Because it does seem highly relevant. All of them seem highly relevant. But, uh, man, unfortunately, the, the SEC is getting a lot of protection here, it does seem. <sighs> then there's this little subheading, Documents Bear on Ripple's Fair Notice Defense, and here's a quote. Defendant's primary argument for relevance is that the documents bear on Ripple's fair notice defense and on whether Garlinghouse and Larson, uh, and Larson uh, knowingly or recklessly assisted Ripple's alleged securities law violation, the court order stated. And here's another quote. As the court has previously found, the fair notice defense focuses on the SEC's behavior and is an objective test of how a reasonable person would have interpreted the agency's conduct, that is, the agency's external behavior. Defendants have not established that the SEC's internal deliberations related to the digital asset space implicate the fair notice defense. None of those deliberations was public, so market participants could not interpret or rely on them to guide their behavior. And so that part's true. Yes, because this information that the SEC is holding back wasn't public, none of that would have had a direct impact on whether or not or anybody at Ripple thought they were doing something right or wrong or, or what their impression was of, of just uh, regulatory status of the crypto market in general. That That, that is true, but... Uh, he, here's the thing. If, if the SEC officials, uh, if it's the case that they weren't so sure of any sort of regulatory status surrounding uh, Bitcoin or Ether or XRP, that proves the point. It still proves the point. Even if Brad Garlinghouse and whoever, anyone at Ripple didn't have this information, it still proves the point that the SEC um, wasn't providing sufficient regulatory clarity. It, like It would still prove that, which is why this is so frustrating to me. Just as somebody, I, and again, I, I don't have a legal background. I'm just using my own brain that I got here. And uh, it's frustrating for that reason because it's still relevant. It still speaks to whether or not there is sufficient clarity in the space. So, so to me, what I'm saying here, just to, in case I'm not clear enough yet, I don't think, to, in my humble opinion, and this isn't a legal opinion, it's just my personal opinion, it doesn't matter that Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson and all the other executives at Ripple couldn't have known what the SEC was saying internally. The, 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 right? Because the SEC still clearly has been kicking the can down the road and doing everything they can to not provide clarity, right? So anyway, that was just disappointing. And then there's this, and it's not all bad. Here, look, here's a headline from Coindesk. SEC must surrender Hinman email on Ether to Ripple, Judge Rules. And, um, and also part of what's covered in this article, and this is the part that probably um, steamed my vegetables the most. It, you, some of you may recall that there is a document, and um, it was circulating, I think it says in this article, it might have been like the day before the, the Bill Hinman free pass for Ethereum speech. I think it may have been the day before. But anyway... Regardless, whatever it was, it was on the topic of uh, XRP. It was a legal analysis of XRP. And folks, we're not getting that. The judge doesn't find that 
uh, to be something that's, uh, or, or the judge does find it rather, to be something that is protected by DPP, this privilege. That, that's really disappointing because that, clear, like, that has to be some sort of, so fine, look, from a legal perspective, it is what it is. But just as a layperson sitting here, I'm saying, how could that not be highly relevant, right? You know what I'm saying here? Uh, so legally, procedurally, what has to be done is different than what a layperson like you or I is going to interpret. But it's frustrating, is it not? Anyway, the Securities and Exchange Commission must surrender an email with a draft of former director William Hinman's speech on whether Ether is a security to Ripple in an ongoing lawsuit the regulatory agency filed against the crypto startup. A judge ruled Thursday. The SEC sued Ripple and members of its leadership at the end of 2020 on charges it sold and continues to sell the XRP cryptocurrency in violation of federal securities law. The agency and Ripple have been involved in a protracted back and forth over what sort of documents must be made available through the discovery process with Ripple seeking a number of documents detailing internal SEC communications and policies. Okay, so pause. So we know that the judge buys the argument that this is just Billy Hinman's opinion, the speech that was given on June 14th, 2018, and 18, uh, saying that Ethereum is not a security, just Billy Hinman's personal opinion. So that means that we're throwing out all the facts and evidence um, sh sh like that indicate the way that everything was framed was, was uh, so that it was to be perceived by the public as official decree from the SEC. We also are throwing out all of the public instances where Bill Hinman used the word we, referencing him and who else, the SEC, as having determined that Ethereum's not a security. So we're to throw that out as well. We're also to throw out Jay Clayton, making a, Jay Clayton, former SEC chair, uh, throw out his comment. There's at least one that's popping in my head right now where he effectively stated the same thing. Uh, it, it, so, and all, and, and why, why is the judge okay with throwing out all of that because of the one-liner, the little asterisks, these comments are just my personal opinion. I'm paraphrasing there, but that's what he said, that just that one little asterisk. But then they get to um, they get to present this in a way that makes it appear to the public, everyone watching, market participants, that it's an official decree of the SEC. They get to do that still, and they get to use the word we, referencing, again, when it's Bill Hinman, he and the SEC, that's allowed still. This doesn't seem right to me. But from a legal perspective, it is what it is. This is this is how things proceed. Anyway, peace continues. SEC attorneys, for their part, have claimed that these documents contain staffer deliberations and therefore are protected against discovery. District Judge Sarah Netburn of the Southern District of New York ruled that some of these documents are indeed protected, but ordered the regulator to turn over others, including an email with Henman's speech and some notes from meetings between SEC staffers and third parties that are not Ripple. At the time of publication, neither the SEC nor Ripple had responded to a Coindesk request for comment on the judge's latest decision in the case. An email of a draft of a 2018 speech by former director of Corporation Finance Hinman uh, is included in the list of documents to be surrendered. Hinman gave the speech in June 2018, telling the audience at a conference that, in his view, Ether was not a security. The speech was seen as pivotal for the crypto industry, given the first 60 million Ether, which is the native token of the Ethereum blockchain, was sold to raise funds for the Ethereum Foundation. Ether is now commonly seen as a commodity in the U.S., with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission overseeing derivatives products based on the cryptocurrency. Henman's speech reflected his own views, he said at the time, a point the judge referenced on Thursday in her ruling. And here's a quote. The personal views of agency employees are not protected by the privilege unless they bear on the formulation of exercise of policy-oriented judgment, the judge said in a 23-page ruling. Accordingly, emails concerning the speech or draft versions are neither pre-decisional nor deliberative uh, agency documents entitled to protection. Uh, yeah. So just his personal opinion... Uh, well, I mean, the SEC, <laughs> they're arguing, uh, see, this is the thing that this, this, bo this bothers me too. They're claiming that th they, because th mind you, all the, the, all the, uh, um, the, the, the question surrounding what is or is not a security. Uh, <laughs> the, well, there is no question <laughs> in case you go back to the 1946 Howie case. Uh, given, given that there, there is sufficient clarity, the SEC has effectively stated that they didn't need to actually formulate any sort of decision surrounding crypto specifically. And, and so I'm, I'm still wondering how all of these documents 
uh, even if pre-decisional, like how is it the case if they're, they're they're stating that they haven't really had to argue anything? And and you know, Ripple's attorneys have brought up that point, but it seems to not matter to Judge Netburn here, which is regrettable, let's say. All right. <sighs> really grinds my gears, folks. Well, the email with the draft speech must be turned over. A separate email sent by the Office of the Chief Counsel for Corporation Finance the day before a speech does not need to be turned over, the judge wrote. And this this is the one that upset me the most, to be honest with you. The documents related to SEC staff's legal analysis of XRP contained the SEC staff preliminary views during the Division of Enforcement's investigation into XRP and did not present a recommendation to the SEC, she said. So there you go. The judge is saying that they are deliberating, <laughs> despite what the SEC has previously argued. They are deliberating uh, on XRP, and it's pre-decisional, right? And so as a result, that's privileged. It gets to stay private. Why does the SEC want this private, though? You know? Because, look, here's the thing. Like, And it seems extra clear now, because even the judge is saying this is just a pre-decisional type of thing, right? Well... Why would the SEC, if this is, if it's such a slam dunk that XRP is a security, why would the SEC not want this out? Which is why I'm suspecting that this is something that would have helped Ripple's argument regarding their fair notice defense. I'm, I'm speculating that may be the case. Why? Why else? Because again, the, even the judge, like I said, pre-decisional here, preliminary views is, the, is, is how it was worded. The documents related to the SEC staff's legal analysis of XRP contained the SEC... Uh, SEC staff preliminary views. There you go. That's that's exactly how they were. It's their preliminary views. So there wasn't certainty surrounding XRP from a regulatory status. <laughs> Folks, this is, oh man, it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating. <sighs> you guys just have to tell me what you think below, but th that, that's what we got here. So there are a few good things in this, but that's a big one. That That's the one that's perhaps most upsetting to me. At least that's my initial impression. I don't know if there's something worse in here that maybe as I think about it more, I'll be like, no, that's actually even worse than this. Maybe that'll happen. But right now I'm thinking this is the worst part of it. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Mambo.